Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain how to create decision tables with return values. So, as I explained in later uh, earlier video, we have uh, two types of decision tables: one with update values and other with uh, return values. So, if you want to know about uh, no, introduction of decision tables, you can see the first video: how to create decision tables with return with update values. So now. To create a decision table with return values, the main usage of this is going to be if user want to compare their existing values with the new planned values. So now we'll go to a HANA Studio where we have a data set. So we'll take same table that we have taken uh, that we considered in our earlier video. So sales transaction table where we have our material group and material group wise net value so we are going to give a discount based on material group and we'll see how it varies so we'll create new decision table we'll go to our HANA e-learning package create new decision table I'll select DT sales discount we have uh, one decision table exist with this so I'm going to add return so create new one then we have to select source so I'm going to select table as source for my decision table add it to right then finish so here we have to select what is our output so I've selected material group as well as I'm going to select my net value now the first thing we have to do is we have to select at least one condition and one action if you don't select those and if you go to decision table it will give you a message saying that decision table should have at least one condition and one action you can come here and you can select any of this as condition and action or you can stay in the same screen and you can select right click on your one of the attributes select as condition and if you select you know your existing field as action once you run this uh, decision table it is actually going to go, go and update the values in your DB so we are not going to select existing value as action here insert will create a new parameter so this is the important change between decision table with update values and decision table with written values so instead of adding an existing field as action we are going to create a new parameter so I'm going to create a new a net value so I'll put same as description here type you can either choose static values or if you want to you know uh, include a dynamic values don't select anything here and I don't want any default value also I'm going to select data type as a decimal say length is going to be press 10 and scale is 2 and then click on ok still you get the same message because we don't have action yet for our decision table so I'm going to add a parameter as action item now we can see a new decision table is populated here so I'm going to add new condition here add condition value so if you don't remember any values that are there in DB you can click on find which gives all the values so first thing we're going to give 5% off on mobiles so once you give your condition the next thing is you have to select your action so you can choose set dynamic value then you can enter so I'm going to enter net value multiplied by 0 0.95 which is going to be 5% discount to the customer if you want to add one more and if you want to delete a default value you can right click there and delete which removes your default condition so I'm going to add one more condition here again 
go on check the DB values then select I'm going to give 10% off on PC so it will be 90 let's say I want to give offer on another product group as well or material group so I'm going to give offer on personal of 15% Alt enter. So once you give these values, you can go ahead and activate your you know, decision table. Now we can see it's active. So say you have you know 50 or 60 material groups, and customer don't want to enter their values manually. The main objective of decision table is for business users. Even though you don't have any DB knowledge or data warehouse knowledge, user can come here and you know create their own decision tables or you know they, they can plan or they can create new planning activities by themselves. They don't need to you know depend on developers. If you if you are a developer, you actually don't need to create decision table. You can always create your procedure, which is going to be your decision tables. So if you don't have knowledge on SQL you can use the decision table to create complex things say so, you know if you have a lot of values and if you don't want to enter manually we also have an option where you can import your decisions from excel import data from excel so what we'll do is i'm going to put all these values in my excel and i'll import from excel so I'll open new Excel sheet. Okay, file. New workbook. And select. Okay. Where the first one is going to be material group. Okay, here we have first one is MATL group so we select first as metal group and the next one is new net value new net value so here we have values even if you don't want to enter those values you can export data from here as well if you want to export data simply right click on this workspace and select export data model so I'm going to save this as xlsx save export it to the following location so now I should have that file in my desktop. We go and check. I have this file, which will be in this format. Now, what we are going to do is I'll remove values from here, and I'll import that file. So, we'll import from Excel. Select this open now we can see all the values available so in this way even if you have more number of values and if you don't want to enter here manually you can import from your excel file so once we have it we can activate this okay so after the decision table is active we can see the relevant procedure in sysbac schema so if you refresh this we can see procedure here package name slash your decision table name so if I mean if you have a knowledge on SQL and if we look at the typical SQL procedure or SQL statement we have you can see see we are just selecting these these values and here you have 
case statement case when this is the metal group and this is going to be your discount I mean new value whereas when we look at the other decision table with update statement it is actually going to update the DB here it's not updating DB it's just returning a data as an output a parameter so so we open our decision table we can actually see a data preview here we go to raw data so we are going to put filter on the metal groups whatever we have given offer so I'm going to select in list here and then we are given discount on PC personal mobile okay so I'll add that PC mobile and okay So now we can see what is the existing net value in database and what is the new net value. So this is how customer can compare you know uh, how their offer is going to affect their business. In the same way we can also execute procedure and see the data final data how it looks. So to execute procedure we are going to open SQL console so right click on your schema SQL console syntax to call procedure is call and your procedure name so as it is not going to update value and it returns your output parameter we have to give question mark for output parameter and then execute now we can see the data preview here okay as we have not given any discount for home metal group we don't have anything but whereas for personal you can see okay so this is how a decision table with return value works which will not update values into your existing database but creates a new field with the affected values so that customer can compare you know they're plan planning things so thank you for watching happy learning